Okay, hello again. So, Professor Dunn here. This week we're going to be talking about the West Atlantic Forest region. So, let me give you a visual here. Okay, so we're talking about a number of different countries here in West Africa. So this area, the first contact with Europeans was in the 15th century with the Portuguese who had sailed along the coast to this area, past the desert region into, this is a fairly um, lush green, you know, uh, region along the shores here. So for centuries to follow, Europeans then used the term Guinea to refer to most of West, the West African coast and also to their coins, a certain coin whose gold originated in this area. Today, Africa's westernmost lands are sometimes known as the West Atlantic region. This is what I'm calling it for this week. And its forest, forested coastline has been divided, as you can see, among a number of different countries. The arts of West Atlantic forest include bold murals, elegant ceramic vessels, ornamental instruments of metal, intricate woven fabrics, and dyed bark cloth. However, the region is most well known for masquerade. Now, in other areas of Africa, women are not allowed to perform masquerade, but here in this area that we're looking at, some uh, masquerades allow women to perform. So we'll be looking at that this week. Early arts, um, if we look at those, we can say that very few archaeological excavations have taken place in the westernmost forest of Africa. And as little is known of the art produced in the region prior to European contact, yet significant works of art include, including figurative sculpture in stone and ivory, were being made at least as early as the 15th century when the Portuguese first arrived in the region. For generations, farmers in Sierra Leone and adjoining portions of Guinea and Liberia have unearthed small figures carved of soapstone and other types of rocks. The imagery and style of these sculptures are quite varied. And, and in fact, when farmers find these um, small figurines that have been, you know, from previous uh, civilizations have been just lost and buried, they actually stack them up around their farm as, um, you know, to wish the planting, uh, you know, a good harvest and stuff. And if they don't get a good harvest, they may actually like whip or curse these little figurines that they've found. So they're looked at as being something that is very spiritual. So coastal style figures have uh, domed foreheads, full noses and mouths, and eyes that are precisely carved as severe cull globes. An unusually long figure um, that we'll look at is this one. Bring up the image. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I really couldn't find such a great picture of it. So it's a little on the pixelated side. But the lines across the figure's mouth, as you see here, may indicate a beard. And common on the figures in this style or referred to, the, they could be referred to the practice of binding the king as part of the initiation ceremony. And, um, we still see this in certain parts of Africa today in this region.
Okay, so next I'm showing you a coastal style head. And this is from the people that were known as the Sapi. Um, and they are, this in, or this particular head was located in the area of Sierra Leone, circa the 16th century. And this, like other heads I haven't found in this area, are not broken and part of something else. These are the way they were created to stand like this by themselves. We see that the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are carved quite prominently. We have this really beautiful braided uh, hair on this person, um, and this overall kind of almost egg shape, uh, interesting egg shape to the head. Now, the Portuguese explorers of the 15th century landed on the coastal sandbars northwest of the hills where they, what they named then Sierra Leone. They, um, there they encountered a cluster of people and it's these people that they refer to the, as the Sapi. Portuguese sailors may have collected ivory objects as souvenirs during the first visit to, to the Sapi region. By the late last decade of the 15th century, they were commissioning works of art from the Sapi sculptures to bring back home to patrons in Europe. And Sapi Portuguese ivories included many things like spoons, boxes, hunting horns, all sorts of things. And what I'm showing you here is a salt cellar. So this is a covered bowl, and it, re, it, re, it resembles a European lidded chalice. Um, and salt at this time was a very valuable commodity. This would be during the Renaissance we're at in Europe from the date, look at the date, circa 1490 to 1530. And so the Europeans would have these very elaborate containers created for salt. And this was very um, popular with wealthy European merchants and uh, aristocrats to have something like this in their possession.